Yeah, well, it, it's doing things like this, you know, it's using my platform as a voice to help inspire people to, if you're struggling at home or at work or whatever, to, to step up and, you know, it's okay to not be okay. So I kind of try to push that out there as well as also if someone's sitting there, that is okay, it might inspire them to, you know, start a conversation with someone they might notice that you're struggling. Because at the end of the day, some people just need to vent and get out what they're going through and you, if you landing in here could literally change someone's life. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, from work point of view, it's pretty pretty simple, you know, it's just grabbing a guy and going for a coffee or if you're noticing someone's had, I guess, back-to-back -back bad performances, they might be struggling with something at home or, or themselves because usually when you're struggling on the field, it's because you're struggling off the field and um, I guess just, just asking that question or saying, hey, do you want to come have a coffee? It might, might literally change their week and change their attitude as a person. I yeah, it, it's very close to me. I, um, I lost my dad to, to mental health. He was battling that through 2018, 19, and I found out he committed suicide two days before the first round in 2019, which ended up being a massive year for me because it was the World Cup year. And I guess at the time, I kind of just went, I'm a man. I can't show weakness, I've got to be strong for my family and the people around me. So I just just swept it under the rug, got through that year and then I had a, a massive breakdown. It became hard to to find, you know, energy to just to go to work and when COVID hit I thought the best thing for me would be to run. So I grabbed my partner who's there and we, we ran as far as we could away thinking that would escape what I was going through. So I went to France to try and escape it but I quickly found out it came with me, so <laughs> I couldn't outrun it. And then I went through a, uh, a lengthy process for about a year trying to work my way through mental health and with people like Jody, and they really helped me and I learned that it's okay to not be okay. And as soon as I took that step, I found my mood just changed dramatically. So yeah, that, that's why I do it, because I'm so passionate about getting this out there and for people to know it's okay to not be okay and it's also great if you can help someone you think is not okay. And firstly I wanted to say thank you for inviting me in today to talk to you about this really important topic. It uh, means a lot to us at the Western Force, it's a really important part of what we do. But also well done on acknowledging Are You Okay Day for Tatarang, it's really important so great to see you all here today. So yes, great question, resilience. Um, I think what we do really well at the force is we do a couple of things. Number one, we make it a daily activity. We made it, make it part of our culture, we make it part of what we talk about. So we don't think about resilience as a concept, we think about it as an activity. So how do we live resilience every day? And so it's the small things for us, it's about talking to each other, it's about making sure that we're okay, it's about making sure that we're really clear on what our role and what our job is um, in the sport. And the other thing that's really, really important to us with resilience is the idea of identity. So knowing that we're there to do sport, but we're also men, sons, brothers, daughters, family members. And that's really, really important to us and that's a big part of acknowledging that and acknowledging that our athletic identity is separate to that. So for me personally, and again this is something that I teach, is I try to keep perspective on everything. So I try to make sure that if I'm having a really tough day, I keep perspective and I ask myself is this real pressure or is this perceived pressure and think about why it's triggering me or why it's upsetting me and then take one or two really small steps to improve that situation. So again really that philosophy about being really proactive about your mental health and your well-being and the things that might be difficult during your day. Simple. This is a really interesting question because this can happen a lot. We can have a couple of bad days in a row and we can suddenly think that we're falling into the pit or we've got a mental health concern. So we look at patterns, we don't look at isolated events, we look at patterns, we look at whether people's behaviour has changed, we look at whether their mood has changed. So really looking at those patterns and not at the individual moments. But I'm paying attention to the moments and identifying them and having good conversations about them. So communication is really important, but keeping an eye on the patterns. And that really comes from our leadership team, as well as with the players as well, identifying when something doesn't feel right or feels a bit different. I think it cannot be underestimated and I think what Isaac touched on there just shows the importance of the conversation and communicating about this sort of thing. So this is why we've got a real focus on wellbeing and mental health and the conversation in our athletic world is because 
we're not immune in sport to mental health concerns or to bad well-being or uh, poor well-being. So it's really important that we build this into our culture from top down and that we keep making sure that the guys have got space in their day, a space in their week, space when they're travelling to be able to communicate and get to know each other quite well. Um, look, I guess like I feel this group, we're very tired as a playing group. We had something the other day, we had a barbecue at the club and I think things like that really grow that sense of connection. The more time you spend together, the more you open up to one another. Like at the end of the day, we are a family. As, as rugby players, we, we come from all different parts of the, the, the country and, and the world. And things like that really grow us together, you know. There's groups of guys that play golf with each other every weekend. There's um, a couple guys like myself and some older guys. We, we play Fortnite, which for you that don't know that, it's a PlayStation game for kids. Yes, I know. <laughs> But, so if you're uh, an older guy, I feel like a really older guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look, like things like that, just we there's banter, there's just connection, we're growing closer, then when we come into work we're, you know, hanging hanging stuff on each other about our performances on the game, but just things like that really grow the connection. The one thing that I would share is something that we use in sports, so I'll, I'll use that from the sporting arena, and that is you've got to be where you've got to be where you've got, when you've got to be there. And so it's about being present in what you're doing, not worrying about yesterday, not worrying too far ahead. Just being mindful and staying present in what you're doing and putting your focus on that task, that moment and what's important because we can lose focus by worrying about things that never happen. So we use that in sport, particularly when we're on field performing, but also off field. It's just being present and being mindful. It's a really good technique that you can use with, with yoga and conversations.